Yeah, all this stuff is for the raptor. It's pretty much always like Christmas here at the shop because I'm always getting packages, even if it's just parts and stuff and tools. Okay, so first on the chopping block for new parts is a new battery box slash tray. Pretty cool. If you guys remember the old one, this whole section was kind of hacked out and I got this for 11 bucks. So I figured, you know, for 11 bucks, I could, I could use the old one, but you know, why not just get the new one just to clean this bike up and stuff. And then my battery won't fly out when I'm riding, just creating more problems down the road. You can see I have the old one here. This is all hacked out. The rubber grommets are miss missing, you know. It's just, I, I mean, kind of one of those things you can't really fix. I mean, I could rig this up and make it work, but, you know, for the price, it was better to just get the used one. That's, and I can wipe that down. It's going to be, like, brand new. And I do have a special spot for this piece. You could buy that for $5.99 if you really want. Anyways, on to the next piece. Here we have a beautiful handcrafted AGM battery. This is actually the second new battery that we have purchased for this Raptor. If you remember, I did buy a new one for this way back when uh, it would actually sort of run and turn over before the crank completely seized up. But I used that battery for something else in another project, so I just went ahead and ordered a new one. That right there just makes it all worth it. New clutch and springs. Pretty self-explanatory. Now this is what we've really been waiting for. We have our case splitter and crankshaft installer and puller. Now this is gonna allow us to split the cases and install our crankshaft. And while in the last video I did say that I can most likely split these cases and pull and install the crank without these tools, I actually just learned myself by doing some research that this is pretty important to use. Even if you can't get the job done with blocks and you know a dead blow and stuff, this is gonna get the job done much safer now, they do come with some paper instructions, but Rocky Mountain ATV has some really good videos showing how to use each one of these tools individually and why it's so important to use the tools and do it with this method rather than smacking the cases apart. So let's go over to the crank case and we'll start pulling the bolts out. So before we do anything with that case splitter, we wanna go around our case and pull all the bolts from this motor. We're gonna go over this thing really good and make sure there's nothing left there is a bolt here on the inside. You want to make sure that you get that one. There's going to be bolts on both sides of the case. So you want to double check, triple check those, because if you throw that case splitter on there and there's still a bolt, you're going to wind up cracking your cases. So I'm pretty sure I have all my bolts removed. Checked it about three times. Just making sure I have everything out of there. Because believe me guys, if you have one bolt left in there, you wind up cracking the cases. So if you look at the manual, they actually suggest that you use a screwdriver or a pry bar. And you know, pry at the pry points around the case. And then use a hammer, it says a soft hammer, to smack it apart. Now that's actually the way that I would have done it. Um, but I'm going to use the tool instead. So I'm going to show you how it works. It's really, really easy. All right, guys. So this is a really straightforward tool. Um, according to the manual, we're supposed to take the right side cover off and um, or have the right side cover facing upward anyways. So this is the clutch side. Makes it easy. Now, basically, what this tool is, you'll see how easy it is once I show you. This here, we have the three ears. And then you have this bolt in the center that presses against your crankshaft. So I'm going to back that off. That slides over your crankshaft. And now you want you want to pull directly out. You don't want this to be cockeyed at all. So that's what these 
bolts are for. So they come in two sizes. I think it's a six millimeter and an eight millimeter. And what you want to do is spread these ears out to try to evenly space them. And you want to go to stronger points on the case, ones that look a little bit more beefy. And we're going to put these bolts in all on these three. And then that's going to be held nice and firm against the case. And then when we put the screw this bolt in, that'll be pressing against the crank and it'll effectively pull the cases apart. And then you just got to be careful that nothing gets hitched up because sometimes you're pulling on one side of the motor, things can get hitched up over here. And if you start pulling the cases apart unevenly, you can screw up your crank, your counter shafts, your counterbalances, um, the dowels, you could even crack the cases. So you might want to, I'm going to grab the mallet to tap this case also as I'm pulling out just to make sure that I have an even split all the way around the cases. So I'm going to go ahead, put these um, bolts in, pick my holes, and then we'll take it from there. So here it is all set up. I've got all these bolts set. For some quads and dirt bikes, you don't have to use it the way that I have it set here. They have these bolts so long so that it can be used for several applications. But for the Raptor, that's how it's gotta be. Now, a couple tips just to, uh, I think that are really important. First off, you wanna make sure this is nice and flat. All of these distances, at least in this case, should be even making this press directly down on that crank. You don't want it coming in an angle anyway, straight down. Also, these bolts here, you wanna thread these into the case pretty much as far as they can go because the last thing you want is when you're pulling up here, you know, you got a lot of pressure on these threads. The last thing you want is to rip those threads out. So I snug those down, didn't go too tight on them, but you wanna make sure that those uh, these bolts are pretty much as far in as they can be. So now I've looked at it, feel like everything's nice and straight, everything's on there nice and tight. So I'm going to take a 17 millimeter ratchet and just start wrenching away and hopefully we'll start to see the case split. And like I said, we'll take a mallet and just kind of pound around the case here and there just uh, to encourage it to split nice and evenly. Well, that was so easy. I'm sure without a doubt, I could have gotten these cases split without this tool, at least in this case. But nevertheless, I'm happy I bought this. I'm sure that's gonna come in handy one day. So here's our bottom end, man. Got our transmission in there. Here's our crank. You can see this rod is stuck. That'd be something if the crank just pulled out too. So I'm gonna take my case splitter off of our right side case and then we'll get to working on removing the parts from the left side case. Take out these balancers. Now as far as I can tell I don't have any problems with this transmission. I visually inspected it. I don't see any broken teeth or anything and it was shifting through the gears before I took this apart. So I'm actually gonna attempt to keep all that together and maybe wrap wire around this or something, just so that that doesn't fall apart, and then we'll pull the crank out. So that wire should hold the transmission in place. So we can move this thing around, get the crank out, and not have to worry about an extra job.
Well, this method isn't working. I don't want to put too much pressure on this tool because I'm either going to crack the case or I'm going to break the tool because this is really hard steel. This will actually crack before it bends. So I don't want to ruin that tool I just bought. Now there's another method I can try. If you guys can see in here, this hole down here, it's got threads in it. There's a hole right here that's got threads in it. Now I read on some forums that you can throw a bolt in there and put even pressure on both of them going back and forth and it'll push that crank right through. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that out. Well, if I had to recommend any method of pulling the crank, that would have to be it. That was extremely easy. Came right out, didn't even really have to heat it. Very happy with that. Here's the old crank here. This rod doesn't want to move at all. This bearing was just fine though. Well, it's about midnight now and I'm freaking tired. So I'm about to call it a night. Tomorrow I'm going to pull that other bearing out of the other side of the case and then we'll throw the new crankshaft and the new bearing in and seal these cases up. That part will be completely done. Then we can get the bottom end together, top end, get the motor in. Alright guys, I'm back in the shop. Here's our hot rods crank. This is what we're going to be putting in today. But what I want to do is throw this thing in the freezer because when things freeze, uh, the metal will actually contract. And then I'll heat up the case and that should make it a lot easier to put this in. So what I'm going to do is throw that in the freezer and while that's getting cold, We'll take out one of this, this main bearing in the other side of the case. And by the time we do that, we should be ready. This thing should be nice and cold. Heat up the other case and get the crank in. All right, so now that that's in there, I'm gonna take off this oil screen so that way we can flip this case over and lay it nice and flat. Put our uh, crank case puller on the other side and we'll be able to push this bearing through, or at least that's what I plan for. You can see this oil screen, he's got little metal shavings all over it. This definitely needs to be pulled apart and cleaned, so we'll do that before we put it back in. But first, let's get our case puller on here and pull that bearing out. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is take this one and a half inch socket, which fits in here real nice, almost perfectly. We're going to do that, and then I'll throw this flat plate of steel on here. That'll give us something nice for this to push against. And then I'll lock this in the position, screw this down, and it should push that bearing right through. Okay, so I have this all set up. That flat piece of steel should be able to spin just fine without hitting any of these bolts. You just really want to make sure that this is nice and level so that you're pressing down nice and even right on that bearing. So now I'm going to take a torch and heat up the race of this case and um, then we'll get to crank it on this thing and see if it pushes out. This thing's being a real bitch. I don't want to put too much more force on this thing because I'm afraid it's going to either crack the case or break the tool. And it's really, 
it's hard to tell. It looks like there might be a small seam like on this side over here. I don't want to touch it because it's still hot. But, you know, I think what I'm going to do is just pull this off and do it the old-fashioned way because this case is nice and flat on the bench. I think I'm going to smack this thing with a, a hammer and a socket, give it a couple good whaps, and uh, I might put some blocks of wood underneath just to press up against the case. We'll see. I'll give it a couple whaps the way it is, and we'll see if it breaks loose. And um, I'm not going to hit it too hard, though, because I don't want to break anything. Uh, let's see what happens. So the good old BFH got the job done. That actually came out fairly easy. It's still smoking hot, so I don't want to touch it. Just have to make sure you go nice and evenly back and forth and keep checking that gap around the bearing so you don't screw up this inner race. So we're actually going to install that other bearing the same exact way. So just like the crank, I threw our new bearing in the freezer, so that's going to shrink and contract. And I'm going to take our cases, heat them up with a torch just like we did before, and that bearing should pop in there fairly easy. We're getting ready to press this bearing in, or smash it in. And while you guys weren't looking, I did clean up these case halves. So I'm going to go ahead, heat up this inner race with the torch. And when it's good and hot, I'm going to grab my bearing out of the freezer, and we'll smack it in there. All right, so while the hammer did get it done, I don't recommend doing it this way. Um, you know, you're not pressing it in nice and evenly. To be frank with you, I think this is perfectly fine though. And um, especially because I'm not racing this motor or anything, but this should be perfectly fine. You can see on the other end where the stops are, or the stop rather, There's an, it's nice and even. You can't press it too far and it can't really be uneven because it's seated up against that lip so that should be perfectly fine and I really wasn't tapping it that hard um, I know it might have seemed loud in the video but I was kind of just letting the hammer you know fall and put just a tiny bit of force it went in a lot easier than it came out probably because this bearing was frozen that method worked really nice bearings working nice and free so this half of the case is all done so now we got to put that crank in. Okay, so we're getting ready to throw a crank in. Now this is our old crank here, but I just wanted to explain why this tool is so important to use. Now while you may be able to take this crank, throw it in on the other side through here, and smack it in with a hammer, you have to consider this gap here. If you're smacking here, tapping this thing in, all you have to do is hit it just right and you can actually throw this crank out of balance even if you're not even if you put a uh, like a block between here or something so that the pressure is not you know squeezing this portion of the crank you can still throw the thing out of balance and I think a lot of people put these cranks in that way or they push them in from this side instead of pulling in and that is probably why hot rods cranks has such a bad reputation because not everybody's a professional motor builder. Hell, I'm not one either. But not everybody is... I guess I should be saying, you know, not everybody should be putting a crank in. And then a lot of people blame the cranks for going bad. Not to say that there aren't, you know, cases where the crank is just actually bad right from the factory. But I don't think Hot Rod's cranks is bad. So basically what this thing here does, once your crank is through the case, which would be right here, this slides over like so. And now this is going to attach 
right here. And then when you when you tighten down that nut on the end, it's gonna pull the crank through this crankcase. There's two rods that are gonna lay on here. All this might be confusing, but as I'm doing it, it'll make sense. It's pretty cool. But you should pull it through that way. And then you're not supposed to hammer the cases together either because that can squeeze the crankshaft. You pull the case on from the other side too. I'll show you. All right, so first, we want to attach this. Shit. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to slide this on here. And then this is actually the swing arm bolt. Because the one for the actual crank is um, flared. It doesn't fit. So you want to make sure that's centered. Now this is going to slide over and screw on. And now, sometimes, you can run this right up. To the case, but in this, in, in this case, you can't do it because there's not a flat surface for this to sit, sit against. So that's what these rods are for. So I'm going to throw this bolt here on the end. And then these rods go like so. I try to put them on uh, thicker spots of the case. Should pull the crank right in. Well, I struggled with that a little bit. I had to tap it out once because um, it was going in a little bit sideways. And then I had to reposition these bars. You can see they actually bent a little bit. But it seemed like at the end there, when I heated up around here, it just slid right in. So it must have been just needed to be heated up or maybe putting the bars this way as opposed to this way. Because when I had it this way, the gap is much narrower on this side. Then over here, it was much larger. So I think this uh, bar was giving a little bit more and it was kind of pulling it in not perfectly straight. So when I went across this way, it pulled it in nice and evenly. So now we're gonna throw this engine over on our bench over here and we're gonna pull the other side of the case on. And I did get our oil screen open. I don't know if you can see it, man, but this thing is filled with crap. So I'm gonna clean that out too. Then we'll just pop those two 8mm bolts back in and put the cases together. Alright, I got my oil screen in. So now I can go ahead and clip these wires. 
so next what we're going to be doing is throwing the gasket sealer on both sides of the cases. I already cleaned these up, made sure they're oil free, no dirt or anything on them because we want to get a good seal. Then we're going to heat up that bearing. Then we're going to use that crankcase or uh, crankshaft installer to put this case on. We're going to pull it on rather than pushing the case on, which could actually throw the uh, crank out of balance. So what we're going to be using is Permatex anaerobic gasket maker. I'm going with this because I put it on the Banshee and it worked out really great. So I'm going to go ahead and put a thin coat on both sides of the cases and then we'll put them together. Bam! Got these all done up. I really like this anaerobic because it won't dry up on you. It only cures in the absence of air. So while it's out like this, it's not going to cure. But once the cases are squeezed together, all the surfaces that are nice and caked in there are going to cure. And also why I like it is because you can wipe away all the excess and stuff whenever you want. Because all the stuff on the outside is not going to cure. So it's time to heat this up. And we'll press the top of our case on. And I just wanted to point this out one more time, guys. Because of this gap right here, you know, this isn't a straight through rod. If we were to take this case, throw it on top, and just smash it on, hit it on with blocks and stuff, it might seem like it's not harming anything, especially if you're using blocks and everything, but you're pushing down on this, and you're putting tension on this rod up here, and that can cause even just the slightest imbalance, that can actually cause this rod to seize. So that's why it's really important to use the crankcase installer when you do this. Before you close your cases up, be sure to take some oil and lubricate all of your bearings so they're not dry for your first startup. It's always nice to put things together and then realize you forgot to put something inside. Like both of the counterweights. Hmm. So this thing went on super smooth. We're not even gonna have to use the crankcase installer, or crankcase puller. I'll show you what we would do though, if we did use it. Basically, just like the other side, we would put these two rods here, throw this on once we've attached that other piece, and just pull the case right on. But for this one, you saw, I mean, it just fell right on. Everything is lined up really, really nice. Everything's nice and smooth. It's just hitting the, uh, the counterweight in there, but everything feels really good. So let's throw these bolts in. I'm going to tighten these down to 9 foot-pounds. The manual calls for 7.8, I believe, but I like to go to 9. Boom, so there it is. The crank is back together. Wiped away all that excess gasket material. 
You can see how nice and clean it looks now. Boom. By the way, guys, this oil tray with a screen in it was really clogged. So now all we gotta do is throw the rest of the bottom end on, which is gonna be in the next video. So you guys can stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to check out my Facebook page, my Instagram. I like to post up pictures of what's going on in the shop because sometimes there's some gaps between videos. You can check them out. They're both ATV Crazy 91. As always, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate all your all support. If you haven't already, leave a comment below. If you like this material, please give me a thumbs up if you like it also. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, guys, have a good week. One last thing I want to add before I end this video is, guys, remember, if you are doing this, take your time. This video is only 30 minutes long, and there's a lot of footage that I didn't include where I was struggling with the crank, pulling the cases apart, and stuff like that. So just remember, it's not as easy as it looks, but it is somewhat simple. So just take your time, don't rush it, and I guarantee you can do it just like I did it.